hello everyone. My name is Ali Rastegori, and uh, I'm uh, working in the maintenance department um, at Volvo GTO uh, Powertrain Production in Shopping, uh, which is a gearbox manufacturing company for trucks, uh, buses, and construction equipment. And today I'm going to talk about condition-based maintenance in the manufacturing industry. And uh, this is mainly the result of my PhD study that I've done uh, between the year 2012 and 2017. I start my presentation with this sentence that we need to have a change in the industry. Uh, the recent published studies show that the overall uh, equipment effectiveness is low and it's about 15 to 25 percent below the targeted level. And the natural reason for that should be uh, machine failures. And also the studies show that uh, maintenance workers are still working with reactive activities instead of preventive activities. And it makes it very challenging for um, the expected increase of digitalization in production and when we need to have uh, more automation uh, in the industry. And uh, also when we are implementing concepts such as uh, Industry 4.0, and we are starting to talk about uh, predictive maintenance when we don't have a lot uh, pre preventive maintenance still. And also studies uh, show that condition-based maintenance or CVM has an important uh, potential to bring um, big savings in different sectors. And as you know, condition-based maintenance is to uh, monitor the condition of the equipment and perform the maintenance work when it's needed. So in that case, we reduce a lot of cost from production losses and a lot of cost from planned maintenance. And we will have some cost for condition monitoring. And uh, we can say that the main objectives of condition-based maintenance is to improve maintenance uh, performance by increasing productivity and OEE, um, having lower cost by having no downtime, uh, no catastrophic failures, no secondary damage, and reducing parts inventory, and so on. And also we can increase process quality and also improve uh, production equipment availability. So there are uh, several motivations to do research in condition-based maintenance area. And... Uh, uh, for example, the importance of maintenance is increasing. And uh, you know that maintenance has a big impact on OEE and uh, productivity in production. And also the introduction of lean concept uh, made uh, also to have sensitive production systems. And also concepts such as Industry 4.0, digitalization and Internet of Things, they all promote the connection of sensors, devices, and assets both to each other and to the internet. Um, and the natural link of condition-based maintenance uh, or condition monitoring to cyber physical system made the role of CBM even more important for the industries. And also, as I said, we still lack uh, the advanced maintenance techniques such as CBM in the manufacturing industry. So in my PhD studies, I had mainly focused on vibration analysis technique, and uh, I brought some technical cases and examples from the, the industry and these results uh, to show how cost-effective is to implement condition-based maintenance in the manufacturing industry. Uh, so as you know, vibration analysis is able to diagnose failures by measuring overall machine vibration or performing more precisely uh, frequency analysis. For example, we can uh, control the condition of the bearings uh, by insta installing the sensors close to the bearing housing and capture the signals and see if we have a damage in the bearing. So one implementation that I had in the, uh, at Volvo company from 2013, uh, I implemented um, online vibration monitoring on five gas circulation fans in hardening area of the company. And for that, we installed the vibration sensors on the electric motor of the fans, and these sensors are connected to the measurement system units by cable, and we can uh, collect this data in a computer software that is uh, 
connected to the measurement system, you need by the company's Ethernet or 3G modem. And the criticality of these fans is that these fans are working 24-7, and each of the breakdowns can take about 20 to 22 hours of production time. And these fans used to have at least one breakdown until the year 2013. But with uh, online vibration monitoring, we could capture this uh, trend of vi vibration. For example, this is one example from 2017. And you see the trend of on, uh, vibration for about two months before the replacement of this fan. And in this case, we uh, prevented this breakdown on this fan. And we can say we saved a lot of money in here. And in general, the result of this vibration analysis on these five fans is that we haven't had any fan, fan breakdown uh, from 2013. And we have replaced six uh, fans due to high value of vibration. And if we consider each breakdown can take about 20 hours of production time. So we saved a lot of money for the company. And when it comes to automotive manufacturing industry, uh, machine tools um, have a very important role uh, for the companies. And uh, Volvo in shopping is uh, operating with about 800 machine tools. So they are very important for the company and they are uh, high value assets. Like one machine tool can cost around um, 15,000 euro. And why we need to measure machine tools? Because of the uh, quality requirements um, on the products and also we can save money by having fewer breakdowns and less spare transport, uh, less noise levels, and so on. Uh, what we do to uh, perform vibration measurement on the machine tools is to uh, do it online with portable instrument uh, that we install the sensor on the spindle of the machine. And the spindle is the rotating part of the machine that uh, has some critical bearings, for example. And we have the vibration outputs close to the machine, and we can connect the uh, portable instrument to the vibration outputs and measure the vibration. But the problem here with offline or manual vibration monitoring is that it's very time consuming, and we need to have extra resources to perform the measurements. Uh, like we need to get help from the operators to stop the machine and do the measurements and so on. And also, we don't have very accurate measurement intervals, and we have some difficulties to uh, transfer the data. So here, what I also tested is um, online or automatic vibration monitoring on the machine tool spindle units. And here, the uh, principle is similar to uh, online monitoring of the fans, that uh, we install the sensors on the spindle units, and uh, they are connected to the measurement unit, and we can collect the data in the computer software. But the challenge here is that the spindles are rotating in different speeds. And uh, uh, also, we, uh, for, the get, for getting the best result, we need to uh, measure the vibration in no load condition, in no cutting, milling, or grinding and processing. Uh, for that, we program the machine uh, to send a signal to the measurement system unit to start and stop the measurements in a no-load condition and in a constant uh, speed. Uh, so we can say that this is uh, completely automatically. Mm, and uh, machine activates the measuring program itself. Uh, this, this trend is the uh, online vibration monitoring of uh, one of the machines uh, in a period of one year. Uh, I think it's the, peri uh, the year 2017 uh, for a turning machine. And you see each of these points are one vibration measurement. And uh, as you see, we have different intervals because the interval is not based on time. It's based on the uh, produced uh, number of uh, work pieces or parts. And in this case, uh, we can say that system can trigger warnings uh, when we have uh, exceeded the vib uh, vibration limits. And also, we don't need to get help from the operators to start uh, to do the measurements. And uh, we say that the measurement time is reduced by 
85%. And we can save time to perform other CBM activities. And also, we have more accurate measurement intervals because it's not based on time, and it's based on the uh, produced parts. And uh, also, we can increase the technical availability of the machine when we uh, spend less time for, the, for doing the measurements. And uh, then I can say that it's a perfect base for implementation of digitalization concept and concepts such uh, as Industry 4.0. By, by this implementation. I have some uh, technical cases I brought from the industry. Uh, uh, the first case is a turning machine in hard uh, machining area. And in this case, we had a quality problem uh, in the work pieces. And also, we had capacity loss um, by about 10 seconds extra per part. And uh, for solving this issue, we have installed a vibration sensor in an uh, axial direction of the spindle, and we found the bearing damage in the spindle. And we can uh, perform different type of vibration analysis techniques. Uh, the more traditional way is uh, velocity spectrum and acceleration sp spectrum, that we can see the these amplitudes are uh, corresponding with the uh, ball pass frequency in inner race of the bearing, that we can understand that we have a damage in the inner race of the bearing. And also, we can use high frequency techniques such as enveloping and uh, or demodulation, shock pulse method, and peak view to find the damages. And all these techniques, for example, show uh, very clearly this bearing damage. So in this figure, you can see the bearing damage in the inner race uh, of the bearing. And by performing the root cause analysis, we found out that uh, the machine had the same uh, start and stop position while changing the workpiece. And it, it was causing this problem. And for solving this, we renovated the spindle and reprogrammed the machine to have different uh, start and stop uh, positions. Uh, so, in result, we can say that we avoid the cost of spindle renovation in the near future. And uh, we did this improvement for the similar machines, and we had a horizontal expansion to similar machines. And we are back to the normal cycle time, and we increase the tool life in the machine. And in total, we can say that we have saved around uh, 55,000 euro in this case. The next case is also a turning machine in hard machining area. And we had also problem in the quality of the product. This is a gear, and you see these chatters in the gear. And uh, we had also capacity loss in this uh, case as well. Uh, and here you can see the vibration analysis of this uh, spindle. Uh, that we have high value of vibration, that's because of uh, the um, uh, lacking preload in the bearing. And also, we did a ball bar test. Ball bar test is a circularity test in the machine tools that we can find, for example, backlash in the machine. And here we have around 30 micro backlash in the machine. Um, and the root cause analysis, we can say that the problem with the spindle bearing is its lifetime and lack of preventive maintenance. And also, uh, we had ge geometry misalignment in the machine because of incorrect installation. And uh, again, for countermeasures, we renovated the spindle and replaced the ball screw in the machine. And this is the result after. We see the difference in the spectrum analysis of vibration analysis and the ball bar test that uh, this 30 micro backlash is completely uh, disappeared. And in these figures, you can see the change in the quality of the products or this gear. Uh, it's uh, totally obvious. And uh, you know, in that case, we can say that we reduced the number of scraps and uh, low quality products. And we reduced the number of used tools in the machine. And again, we are back to the normal cycle time. Uh, the next case is interesting for us because uh, we always have this question, should we 
measure the, a new machine. And we should say yes, because uh, in that case, we can use guarantee. For example, this was a new spindle, new machine. Uh, and we found this bearing damage from the beginning. And uh, in that case, we used guarantee, and we saved around 30,000 euro. And you can see the spectrum analysis after replacing the spindle. So in general, we can say that uh, using condition-based maintenance is cost-effective for us because we can use guarantee, we can reduce downtime in acute breakdowns, we can reduce risk of having scraps or uh, low-quality products, uh, we can increase both tool life and spindle life, and we can reduce cost due to having a spare spindle in the warehouse, and it's very useful for the machines that cannot or do not have to have unplanned stop due to high production volumes. And this case is also interesting that, uh, for example, for this machine, we had a, a planned maintenance to replace the spindle after 10,000 operation hours. And uh, in experience, we run this spindle until 60,000 operation hours. Uh, without having a failure. Uh, so in that case, by using vibration analysis, for example, we can use the maximum life length of the spindle instead of replacing it uh, when it's not needed. And in that case, for example, in this time, uh, we uh, saved around 120,000 euro. And this is a result of 2017. We measured around 50 machines, and we found around uh, 12 faults in the machines, and we saved around 550,000 euro. And again, we can say, so using condition-based maintenance is cost-effective for us. And in general conclusions, I can say that there is potential to reduce cost and increase productivity and overall equipment effectiveness when implementing CBM. And again, it's important to start a condition-based maintenance implementation from a strategic perspective, and not to implement it where it's not needed. And it's challenging for us, but important to calculate the possible value of condition-based maintenance implementation. And also for uh, implementing pre predictive maintenance also, we can use the guidelines and inspirations from these cases that we have uh, for the implementation. So I think that's all I had to present today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Mm -hmm.